Hi everyone! In the last video, we discussed how to use cobwebbing to illustrate the behavior of a first order linear difference equation, and then we plotted out a simple example of cobwebbing by hand. Of course, although it's important to plot things like that by hand, uh, to be able to do that, in practice we generally would just use a computer instead. So in this video, we'll be implementing a simple Python program to plot the results of cobwebbing for a first order difference equation. I'm going to be using Google Colab, um, which provides an easy to use hosted Jupyter notebook if you have a Google account. You can, of course, do everything in any comparable Python environment, and in particular, codecollab.io might be helpful if you're working with a group of others, as that actually allows real-time collaboration, unlike Google Col Colab. I'll put links to both down below. So first, as you hopefully already know from CSE A08 or A20, it's always important to document your code so you can come back to it later. So let's go ahead and get started by naming this document uh, cobwebbing uh, of first order uh, difference equations. Uh, this document, this program takes as input uh, a first order recurrence relation and an initial condition and draws out a, an appropriate cobwebbing diagram. Okay, so let's actually get to coding. Now, what do we need? Well, we need to define the, uh, we need to actually define the uh, recurrence relation. So let's start by defining a function f of x. Uh, let's start with the same equation we, recurrence relation we used last time. So we're going to return x over 2 plus 5. Uh, as a side note, if you're using Python 2, which is now deprecated, you may have to specify that you want a floating point division as opposed to an integer division. Hopefully you're using Python 3 by now though. Okay, so there's that. Let's see if that works. So uh, f of 5, uh, let's see, let's run that, and that gives us 7.5. Okay, good. So we know that that works. Um, and next, of course, we, we want some plotting tools. So, oh, well, uh, let's go back there. Um, let's import matplotlib pyplot as plt, which is pretty standard. And let's go ahead and import numpy as np, as I tend to use numpy uh, commands quite often. So let's start by just uh, generating a figure. So let's use subplot so we actually get the axis handles. Okay, so now we have a, um, no, sorry, I'm blocking that, aren't I? Let me, ah, there. Okay, so I should no longer be blocking anything. Yeah, so we have uh, something that goes from zero to one uh, as our, those are default axes. Uh, let's set them to be something slightly different just so that uh, we can see a little bit more. Let's set them to 0 to 10, like we did for um, the one we drew out by hand. Okay, so there's that. Uh, we should probably, I'm not going to, uh, we should probably label the axes any, uh, as well. So let's set our uh, x label as uh, x axis. And our y label as y axis. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and plot out the two lines, the y equals x line and the um, also the y equals f of x line. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and cheat a little bit and do this. So for those who aren't aware, numpy.a range uh, is super nice because it just gives you a list of coordinates from zero to whatever. And so I'm going to just plot a range by a range of 20. So I so the first argument here is the x coordinates, so numpy.a range 20, and our y coordinates, numpy.a range 20. Okay, so that's our y equals x line. Uh, it's a little bit irritating that things aren't centered properly, but uh, we can fix that later if we want, or the, that things aren't square, but we can fix that later. Okay, and let's go ahead and also plot our uh, y equals f of x line. So we need to have some y coordinates, and I'm going to go ahead and just 
specify a set of coordinates, uh, 0 to 20. Not all of these are going to be on the chart itself. It doesn't really matter. We're overplotting since we already specified our axis limits. And uh, let's see. So we want to apply f of x for every x in this range, uh, 20. Oh, what did I do wrong? Ah, a range. Just type that. Okay, so that is our, uh, this orange line here is the y equals f of x line. And now the next thing we need to do is we need to plot uh, the cobweb. So how should we do that? So the, remember, the cobwebbing algorithm, you start at some point here, you go up to the uh, y equals uh, you go up to the y equals f of x line, and then you go to the right, or in whichever direction, right or left, to your y equals x line, and then back up to your y equals f of x line, and so on. So to do that, we need to iterate over a set of points. So uh, let's uh, define our number of iterations to be, let's say, 10 for now. We can increase that number later. Uh, and let's say our initial x naught, let's set that equal to 1. Uh, one's a nice round number. And uh, let's say that we start with an empty list of coordinates. So a point list is going to be the empty list. And let's start by appending to our empty list our first coordinate, which, uh, as you recall from the previous lecture, is x sub, uh, x sub 0, uh, 0. OK, so now we've appended that. Uh, and uh, let's see, so we end up with a list. Uh, that has just a single point right now. So let's just one zero. Okay, now all we need to do is use a simple for loop and that'll allow us to uh, repeat the process of a uh, cobwebbing that we described. So for i, for one, yeah, for i in range num iterations, let's do uh, x, y is going to be equal to the last point in our list. So we're gonna start from our previous point uh, and then we're going to set y equal to f of x. And then we're going to append this point to our list. So x, y. And then, uh, well, then what's our next step? We uh, then we just went from our initial starting location up to the y equals f of x line. And now we want to go to the place, <coughs> go horizontally until we hit the y equals x line. So in order to do that, all we have to do is set x equal to y. And though we're going to append lat again, so x, y, um, let me go ahead and put a space in there so that we're following proper coding style. Um, and now let's see what we have. So what does our point list look like now? Okay, so it looks like we have a list of points. It looks like everything is converging up to that uh, intersection point at 1010, which, is perhaps, uh, which shouldn't be surprising. And now we want to plot these point lists. Now, unfortunately, uh, you'll have noticed that instead of having an x list and a y list, we have a combination. We have a list of x y coordinates, and so we need to separate that out. There are a couple different ways of doing that. I prefer to use NumPy, uh, and so I'm going to define a point array to be in numpy dot array of our point list, and then x comma y. Uh, let's make that big X. Big Y is going to be equal to point array transposed. And uh, you'll see that our x is now our list of, uh, we can print both x and y. And you'll see that we've now separated out into two different arrays, uh, the x coordinates and y coordinates. And then all we have to do is we plot again onto our the same axes, uh, x and y. And the screen line here then shows the cobwebbing behavior. So you start at uh, the point one zero. You go up all the way to its intersection with the y equals f of x line here in orange. Then you go to the right, and then you go up again, and so on. Okay, so that uh, seems to work. Uh, what happens if we try uh, something slightly different? What about say uh, if our recurrence relation is f uh, f of x is equal to x over three plus five? Well, you get the same sort of behavior, except the intersection's at a different point now. Let's try something nonlinear. What if we have x squared 
over 3 plus 5. Uh, that doesn't work because you can't actually take squares in Python. Uh, x times times 2 divided by 3 plus 5. Uh, so it looks like our axes are no longer particularly good. Let's actually extend our axes out a little bit and see if we can see a little bit more. Uh, and you'll notice that we seem to be diverging, which is a little bit unfortunate, but uh, shouldn't be too surprising since uh, we have a parabola that doesn't intersect at a nice location. Let's actually divide this by... Uh, let's actually subtract this by 10 and see if this gives us a slightly nicer graph. Uh, no, that actually completely makes it fail. So we clearly are going in the wrong direction. Uh, let's say 3. Where does that go? Nope. Plus 3. Ah, okay, so this one looks a little bit nicer. Uh, and you get the same sort of cobwebbing, and obviously this particular uh, parabola doesn't intersect too nicely as things diverge. Um, let's actually try negative x squared. Oh, uh, that's actually quite interesting. I'm not sure what's going on there. Let's zoom in a little bit and see what went on. Okay, so it looks like we ran into a couple of issues, one of which is that our parabola, because we're only uh, sampling it at uh, our unit points, it's looking a little bit um, jagged. So let's actually increase the uh, resolution at which we're sampling. So let's say numpy a range 100 divided by 10. Uh, for that sampling. And let's go ahead and sample the other one a little bit more carefully as well. Okay, so now our parabola is smooth again, and it looks like... Uh, let's actually decrease the number of iterations so we can see what's going on in the first couple of iterations. Okay, so you'll see this is doing something much... Uh, this is doing quite interesting behavior. It's starting here at the one point. It goes up to the orange curve, goes to the right uh, to the uh, y equals x line, and goes back down, and it goes in this sort of spiral uh, pattern. Uh, let's see, it seems to be spiraling out towards this box at 0, 3, uh, bounded by 0 and 3 on the x and y axes. And so, as you see, uh, by making use of uh, some very simple Python uh, programs, we can very quickly plot out the cob the, the cobwebbing diagrams for a number of different first-order uh, recurrence relations, including ones that are nonlinear. Uh, thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.